in the month of January 2015. Four high school students in the swimming community committed suicide. Asking about suicide isn't going to lead a kid to suicide. If they're going down that path and you ask, then you're going to have the potential to help. But if you're afraid to ask, you, you may end up, you know, you may end up regretting that you didn't. She was going through a tough time, so we noticed some stuff, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't a, uh, even looking back, it, we, I, 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 don't, I don't know that there's anything that we could have or should have or, you know, would have been aware to do differently. Um, uh, you know, except for maybe have a little bit more communication and try to open up a little bit more about that. Um, but, you know, I mean, obviously she was upset and we had some conversations about some of those things, but I didn't... Outside of that, I didn't see anything in particular leading up to it. So, and I, I don't, I don't think her parents really did either. So, um. you know, it's only the person who's going through a particularly difficult time in their life who can decide whether or not it's a crisis. Um, it is really kind of up to that person. We cannot define for anybody else. Um, what may be a crisis and what is not. Um, but generally, people going through crisis are experiencing um, some kind of devastating turning point, a loss or the threat of some kind of loss in their life. Um, and it's a challenge that's kind of taxing um, all of their resources and perhaps making them feel like um, it's something that they can't handle by themselves. There's lots of crisis in, in a competitive athlete's uh, life. You see crisis relative to um, fear of performance, and then that's one thing. You see crisis, to, uh, just um, bad things going on in their life that have an impact on what they're doing in, in the pool. So. Yeah, I, I had a lot of struggles um, as I was growing up through swimming. Um, I had a lot of crises um, throughout my time at UF and my coach was always there to listen to me. Um, we, we sit back and we talk about it now and, and he doesn't always, he didn't always know what to say to me, but he was always there and he always listened and it was a really important part of me getting through the crises that I faced. Um, my mom had cancer as I was training, she later died when I was training too and, and it was really important for me to have support to be able to talk about those things and, and for me swimming was, was a relief, swimming was something that I used as self-care, as therapy. But I'm also very aware as a counseling student that swimming can be a stressor for people as well. So um, recognizing that swimming can create stress, school can create stress, family members can create stress, friends can create stress, that there's a lot of different stresses in everybody's life and it's important to recognize um, who, who you can go to when you're in that, that space. You know, it's something that it's so difficult and it, you know, I, for so many people, there is this pressure of, I should be able to handle it. You know, whether it's because um, I should be strong enough because I'm a guy, I should be strong enough because I'm an athlete, I should be strong enough because I have so much love around me. You know, so many people have this pressure in the sense that I should just be able to handle it. And then when they reach a point of crisis, they reach a point of kind of this high level of distress, um, then the dilemma becomes, how do I reach out? How do I let people know that I'm in pain, that I'm hurting, um, without feeling like I'm gonna be a burden or without feeling like there's something wrong with me for reaching out? And so that unfortunately, the shame and the stigma around reaching out for help and calling a hotline, um, talking to a friend, talking to a coach, talking to a mentor, it's, it's pervasive and I think, um, Conversations like this are so important to let people know that we all kind of feel that maybe hesitation or that sort of wonder or doubt, like, should I reach out? Um, but so important that we do because we all experience it and we all deserve um, to be heard. We all deserve having somebody there who will really listen to us and hear us out. 
Um, I think a lot of people have a huge stigma about suicide and, and it's really hard. It's a taboo subject, people don't want to talk about it. Um, when people are in crisis, specifically athletes, I think in general it's really hard for them to reach out. Um, there is such a, a norm within the sport to say I'm tough and I'm going to keep, keep trying and keep pushing and I, and I just don't want to ask for help. So I think it's important to allow people the space and, and to feel safe to ask for help um, if they're in crisis. And, and also I think it's important to, to speak to coaches and parents about it too because as it is such a big stigma it's, it's important to recognize that people can find a, a common language to, to talk about something that's not widely talked about. People are terrified of the word, people are terrified of the conversation and I, I think that it's important to be aware that adults and youth, we all know what it is, we are aware of it and so it's understandable people kind of say, gosh, let's avoid it on some level um, because of the intense responsibility with it, the fear of um, implanting the idea, the, the fear of um, making things worse, right? And um, in fact, the opposite is true, that we really, you know, we know it's a public health issue, we know it's an issue um, for teens and youth, so we need to have the conversation openly and directly, um, be willing to say the word, be willing to talk about um, the realities of it. Um, most everybody, unfortunately, has been touched by suicide in one way or another, and if we're not talking about it, we're really um, enhancing and, and magnifying the stigma around it and the shame around it versus if you know if I know that my coach is willing to has said the word and is willing to talk about it if I or somebody I know is um, in distress and I'm worried about them or myself I'm much more likely to go to that person and talk about it. Swimmers push through physical injuries, they push through fatigue, they push through so many barriers to swim as fast as they can to compete at the level that, that we want to compete at. And I think because we do that to our bodies, it's really easy to forget that our minds need some help sometimes and we may need um, some self-care, we may need some space to, to look after our minds. Um, as well as look like, after our bodies. So, so I think a, a lot of reasons that swimmers may not ask for help is because we've been trained to push through tiredness, we've been trained to push through um, the stress of, of the athletic world. So we're gonna push through the, the stresses that we have in our mind and just keep going. And then we, it's too late before we realize that we, we need help. shame everyone reaches out to help and that's that's part of the whole deal um, it doesn't matter what aspect of life you're involved in having people around you that are, are knowledgeable about situations that you aren't as knowledgeable about and uh, we talk to athletes a lot especially in a team environment how important it is to share what you're doing because when you share the burden usually you is more receptive it's really hard to um, change your mindset when you're talking about um, athletes and, and the way that they swim and the way that they train. It's hard to talk about um, changing the mindset to recognize suicide and recognize crisis and recognize warning signs. But I do think that coaches, swimmers and parents all have the space to change and to create a, a dialogue just to start talking about something that's uncomfortable and hopefully um, prevent things like this happening in the future. world the swimmer would come to you with the dialogue it's, it's always better if it comes from the athlete than it is um, to initiate it but sometimes they just don't do that so if you can uh, if you can encourage them to initiate it on their own through some other avenue um, just trying to have a good relationship if they know that you're interested in them then lots of times they'll share the situation and then you can actually point them in the right direction to find uh, some meaning, meaningful way to deal with the problem there. I think communication is the key. You know, if a kid's struggling, make sure you're talking to them, make sure you're, you know, asking them what's going on. Um, and I think one of the things that, that I've learned from just from going through this process is not to be afraid to talk about suicide. You know, be, be 
be open and be okay with asking. Um, it, you know, avoidance isn't the answer when it comes to that. people in your life? What are the professional but also the personal resources in your life? Who are the people that you would go to talk to? Who are the people you know would listen? And um, to really kind of keep keep that close. And I'd say to coaches and to, to have those conversations, you know, to make it okay for um, the youth that they're working with to reach out for help and say, hey, if you're ever struggling, we're a resource. This phone number is a resource. Who else would you talk to and just be able to have that conversation and because we never know when somebody is struggling. You never know what people are carrying. People are carrying usually way more than they ever say. I think it's important as a coach to, to create a dialogue with your swimmers, to be able to find out whether your swimmer is, um, is struggling that day because they're tired, because they haven't you know, had enough sleep, or because they've been out partying the night before, or if they're tired because they've had an argument, or because their dog died, or because they've just had a lot of different stresses um, in their life. And, and having that dialogue as a, as a coach um, with your swimmers is, is so valuable to be able to see, you know, when you can push them a little bit harder and when you can sit there and, and spend some time with them and, and recognize what can, what can be changed, uh, whether they're in crisis or not. Crisis is so normal. We all experience crisis in our lifetime. We all go through those times that we feel like um, it's too much or it's um, something that we can't handle by ourselves. And so I think it's so important that people know that, that people know, because when we're in crisis, we often feel like we're the only person in the world who's going through it. We f may feel like um, we're going crazy and we're feeling like this is something I should be able to handle by myself, but uh, we all go through those times where it just feels so heavy and so difficult and can take us to a place of feeling so alone and so sad or so angry. And the most important thing during that time is for people to know that there's somebody there, that they can reach out to somebody, that they can call somebody who will just listen team environment, it was really hard sometimes to speak up um, if I was in crisis. I felt ashamed um, that I wasn't as tough as other people or I felt that um, the space wasn't really available within a team environment to, to fail, so to speak, or to feel um, not as good as other people because I was suffering. Um, but one-on-one -on -one with a coach or one-on-one -on -one with a peer was, was really helpful. Um, to find that space to ask for help or ask for a shoulder or ask for, you know, just a walk or whatever it was that I needed that day. There was people around me that I, I knew I could go to. It's obviously so important and it's kind of this sort of quote-unquote simple concept of listening, right? It seems obvious, but it is tricky. I think that, you know, especially for those in mentorship roles, uh, coaches, teachers, and when we're working with youth, there's this sense of how do we help? How do we fix? How do we make it better? And it's easy to skip over the step of just really being there and listening. And so I would say to really trust that, you know, to think about what it's meant in your life to be really heard and listened to and the power of that. And to take that time to really sit and, and trust that there's an incredible power in hearing somebody out, even if it's a lot of pain, even if it's a lot of tears, even if it's anger, that allowing somebody to vent, allowing somebody to walk through kind of what it is that they're experiencing and really feel heard can be more powerful than anything else. It's a, it's a life problem. It's a, it's a, um, a social issue that if you're a coach though and you find out about it and it manifests itself at the pool, then I think the first thing you tell the parents is you want to look for some professional manner to get someone to deal with it. Uh, those type of situations in my experience, and I've felt, dealt with a few of them, are usually ones that um, it's out of your realm of, of expertise to deal with. So if you can bring someone into the equation that's used to dealing with it, the chances of success of putting the athlete in the right direction and the person in the right direction are, are, are better. 1-800-273-TALK is uh, an invaluable number and I'd say for any and everybody to be aware of. That's part of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. 
That's a 24-7 number, and you can call it from anywhere in the country and reach your closest crisis suicide prevention center. For anybody who's struggling, any level of distress, even just having a bad day and just feeling really alone, or having the worst day of your life and thinking about suicide, I'd say please know that number, please call, please reach out. Uh, for people who are in that sort of coaching mentorship role, know that number, reach out, um, give it to others. Call yourself. If you're worried about somebody and you don't know what to say, you can call and even just get advice and thoughts and um, a chance to sort of talk about how to help that person that you're worried about. Um, that is kind of the biggest resource in terms of um, just something that's 24-7 available. So I'd say for everybody to really be aware of that number, to call, find out specifically what the crisis center in your area offers. You can work in the community. We're fortunate here because I'm in a university community, so you've got a lot of people in the setting. But uh, in, in, in a normal situation, when I was in a club environment, you'd, you'd reach outside your dynamic, look for a counseling system, people in the community that are, are versed in that area, crisis prevention centers, um, yeah, counseling centers that deal with that. And if, if all else fails, then you consult some sort of doctor. Uh, with these two different um these two different values, swimming is about competing, is about um, winning, is about doing your best, is about striving for, for, for more and more and more, whereas counseling is about looking after yourself and taking time to, to care for yourself and, and recognizing when stresses can be tended to. Um, so I think it's really important that the stigma of asking for help within a sport is taken away. Um, and, and somehow able to bridge the, the gap between asking for help or going to see a counselor and it not being shameful as an athlete. What I would say is kind of really kind of be willing to reach out, be willing to knock on each other's doors, be willing to make that phone call, be willing to check in. Um, because we know that, gosh, when somebody's checked in with me and somebody's kind of really reached out to me and said, how are you doing? That means so much. And so to not be afraid, to not be afraid of saying the wrong thing, that, you know, it's the reaching out, it's the, the somebody, I'm worth somebody checking in with me and how invaluable that is. Um, you never know the impact of that. So trusting your instinct, trusting your gut, trusting that if you are concerned about yourself or somebody else that, um, you can really, you can end up saving somebody's life by being willing to knock on their door. Make sure you communicate with your athletes, make sure you're keeping an eye on what's going on, and don't be afraid to ask them, you know, if they're okay and if they're, you know, how they're doing or whatever it may be. And I think it's important if you do suspect something to say something, whether it's to the parents or to them, depending on the age of the kids, um, you know, I mean, one of the things that we've tried to do is keep the communication lines really open between me, the athletes, and the parents. Um, and if, if I've seen a kid struggling or if I've seen a kid having a, a rough day or two days, I'll drop a note or a text message to the parent and say, hey, you know, just letting you know, Susie's looked a little down the last couple days. I just wanted to make you aware. Um, because it is some pretty heavy stuff that we've been going through. So uh, that would be the biggest thing that I would, I would have to say. All right. <laughs>